record we're recording okay so i'm going to try to do this without coughing through it again but um bear with me <coughs> out of minutes from last month um everybody got a newsletter and should have seen the minutes anybody have any corrections or additions or anything with the minutes in that case i will ask for a motion to accept the minutes motion to accept is anyone second? Motion second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Okay. Um, Ken, do we have new members tonight? We have one. Let's let's go ahead and vote him in, and then we'll do the treasurer's report. Yay. Okay. It is Daniel Fry, K4DLF. He is a general. What do you want to do, guys? <laughs> I'll make the motion. motion. <laughs> I'll second it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Congratulations. I say we just take the check. Well, we, we did that. It's in the bank, so we're we're all set for that. <laughs> okay, so um we're going to have a silent key ceremony tonight, but let's go ahead and do that after mm -hmm. Ken gives his, his report. Uh, Ken, you want to tell right. us what, how much money money we got? I, I, I got some bad news on, on the bank account. The B of A either merged with somebody or something, but anyhow, they changed the name of our account and whatnot. And while we used to have to keep $3,000 in the account to not have to pay a monthly fee, they raised that now to $5,000. Um, not really a big issue uh, unless we go and spend a bunch of money. So uh, just to let you know, that's a minor change. But um, and I think the dollar amount is something like dollars a month if we ever had to pay it. So it's not exactly uh, outlandish. OK, we started the month with uh, fifteen thousand eight hundred and fifty six dollars and three pennies. Um, we had, let's see if I can add them up in my head. We had $100 worth of dues come in and $460 worth of classes uh, to be paid. So that's $560. Uh, then we had to pay for our storage unit, which was $46. And then we had to refund $20 to the one extra student uh, since we didn't have the class. So that's $66 that went out, uh, but it brings our total to $16,359 and three pennies. So okay. we're doing pretty good on that. Um, but who knows when we're going to start spending some money? Well, we're doing pretty good. I mean, the Treasury, for anybody who hasn't been with us a long time, the Treasury has <laughs> doubled in the last three years. So somebody's, Ken's doing something right. So somebody is. Um, all right, I'll, I'll go ahead and um, while we're on the subject of money and donations and things, we uh, I got a call this past week from a lady by the name of Lindy Fraylin. And uh, as happens pretty often around here these days, uh, she had her father pass away. He was AI4DW, Haywood Houts. I think he was living in uh, North Carolina, but he had a, a, a brand new... Um, um, I, I come, uh, not, I'm sorry, Yezu FT-1000 MP Mark V radio that she didn't know what to do with. And she asked if the club would be interested in it. So I told her I thought we would. And so we picked it up from a day before yesterday. And it's sitting here on my uh, my workbench, all tested out, and ready to go. The only thing it doesn't have, it requires an external power supply, which didn't come with it. And I think he had a... Uh, uh, the, the premium microphone on the stand. So we didn't get the microphone. It went with another radio that she had. So anyway, we uh, the club now is in possession of that radio and we'd like to uh, to try to auction it off or get rid of it or sell it, whatever, since we we already have a, a spare radio in in, uh, in storage for our uh, back of our uh, automatic state. I mean, our remote station and for field day and things. I think we have plenty enough radios. So if somebody wants to make a a decent offer on that radio uh, the club would be more than happy to uh, to entertain an offer uh, if you if you have you interested in it get in touch with ken and we can uh, you can work out the deal and we'll deliver the radio to you if we if we can if you're local so uh 
in, in, at the same time, though, we need to go ahead and, as we traditionally do, silent key the people who are leaving us stuff. And uh, Ken, why don't you go ahead and, can, and let's do our, our little silent key ceremony for old Haywood. You, you're muted, Ken. Okay, John, I wrote down the call sign wrong because I had two numbers. It's AI4. Okay, AI4. It's Alpha India Ford Dog Whiskey. Yeah. Okay, CQ Alpha India Ford Dog Whiskey. CQ Alpha India Ford Dog Whiskey. CQ Alpha India Ford Dog Whiskey. Whiskey, Silent Key, Alpha. Rest in Peace. Yeah, Rest in Peace. Okay, um, everybody familiar with the Virtual Ham Expo and what's happening with that? I don't know if any of y'all, I, I bought a ticket to it. I, this will be the first one I attend. That, um, we've been getting uh, publications from ARL and things about it. So if any of y'all are interested in it, I think it's happening tomorrow. <laughs> Ten dollars to get in. Uh, supposed to be a lot of technical information and stuff. So you may want to, um, if you haven't signed up for it, all you might want to go ahead and take a look at that. Um, let's see. We got Bruce's announcements tonight. Bruce has some announcements for us. I have two um, classes. Just to let you know, the classes are bumping along. Uh, John's got a whole batch of people. What twenty some, I guess, for tech, John? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Ken's got four for uh, general. We only had uh, one for extra, so we didn't uh, didn't start that class. Um, the other announcement is that um, I'm doing a class next Tuesday, a seminar. We haven't done the seminars in about a year or so, but I'm doing one on using the remote, the club's remote control station. So uh, it's 10 bucks, usual seminar. Um, you can look it up on the website. There's a place to um, to to check off if you want to come to it. And uh, now that Ken has gotten the PayPal and the credit card to work, you can go ahead and sign up for it and pay for it. Uh, it'll be next Tuesday. And then two weeks later, we'll have a second. So we'll start off with the overview of using the remote station and a demonstration of it. And the next Tuesday, uh, two Tuesdays later, we'll get together again. And those of you who have loaded up the software will kind of work through getting you online and getting you to use it. So um, it's called uh, remote, Remotely Controlled Station. Um, set up an operation. So you'll find that on a website. Okay, thank you, Bruce. Um, and that uh, brings us to, uh, Bruce was speaking about the PayPal situation. That brings us to a demonstration Ken's gonna conduct for us. Uh, we now have the capability, a couple of years ago, it became a, a, a request uh, from some of the members that we had a, a method for paying with PayPal and credit cards. And of course, at the time we didn't and some other clubs in town had it and people figured we should get it. So we looked at the cost and at that time it was a problem. It wouldn't have, it wouldn't have been beneficial to the club to do it. However, now we've worked out the, uh, the, the, the financial problems and Ken has been working diligently on getting the mechanics of it to work. So I'm gonna turn this over to Ken and let him show you all what he's done and what's available to you. Okay. Let me um, bring up the. Whoever's got an open mic, you might want to mute yourself. Okay, this is um, on our website. Um, you, you today, you cannot actually reach this uh, as a normal member. However, tomorrow you will, um, and this will replace. When you come over here for um, uh, membership application, this is what's going to come up. Um, the old membership application here is a PDF, and it's a PDF that you can actually fill in, and then you can print it off and mail it to us with a check and everything. Um, this new one. Uh, you can fill it out here. However, you cannot uh, download it to your computer. It's, it's here. Um, the reason for that is, is that when you fill this out, and let me try 
try to type. Um, I've filled this out many times before. So um, it sort of knows about me for most of this. Um, you can see here that I have like a, uh, a preview of what you should do. You should put your phone number in here with the area code and how, how to do that. Uh, this will magically disappear as soon as you start typing. So um, um, you have here the choice of home, cell, work, or something else. Um, that is my home phone number, so whoopee. Um, the state defaults to Virginia. So if that's where you are, great. If not, type in what you want. Um, year of birth. Um, it does have limits. In other words, you, you can't say, hey, I was born in 2020. Um, that's an invalid entry. It will not accept that. That's, you know, you can't be one year old and join the club. Um, so 1950, I'm older than that, but we'll put that in. Um, these are just yes or no's. Are you a member of ARRL? If yes, say so. If you have a handheld, say so. If you want to be on the emergency list, if you want to help us teach, John, can you get whoever came in? I got him. All right. Um, type of license, what do you hold? Okay, select it. Um, any interest you might have? Uh, you know, I, I'd like to do satellites. Uh, oh, packet sounds good. I do VHS, oh, DXing. Anything else you can type in here. Any special skills that you have? Uh, you know, I can work on web sites. I can. Yeah. Under the license class, you had advanced. It's advanced. Oh, okay. Thank you. I will fix that. Um, and then you come down here is the date of application is, is today's date. The bad news is, although it does give you the calendar, it doesn't tell you what today is. Uh, so you have to know what the day is. Uh, you can lie and put in any date you want. doesn't really matter. Um, the default here is to say you want to pay by credit card. Uh, we have the, this is the, uh, uh, biggest discussion that we've had. Um, we raised the dues to $22 to cover the fee that we have to pay on this. Um, if you pay by PayPal, debit card, credit card, they're all under the same umbrella. If you pay by cash or check, it's discounted down to $20. So if you do it the way we've always done it, it costs you $20. Um, the bad news is, is you don't get this form. And so you need to just put a piece of paper around your check and mail it to us. Um, so let me, let me change this to this because it'll be a little quicker, a little easier to explain what happens. Um, I added this back in. Uh, membership dues are prorated after the half of the year. Uh, we, we drop them by 50%. So this would go to 21 or to 11, this would go to 10. Ben. Yes. Uh, on the person's age 21 and over, 81 and over, maybe you should put parentheses check, check, check. Yeah, I'll, I'll check. add that. That was the, the other thing is if you are right. over 81, you're not required to pay. And I'll put on here, select cash or check. Um, because of what happens. Now, when this, when you hit submit, this emails to the club's email address, the data that's on this form. The form doesn't go, just the data. So that data, uh, invalid. And I may have changed something on this while I was uh, playing. Okay, I don't see what, 
I, I've obviously changed something that, that I shouldn't have. Um, let me show you where you would have landed, okay? Um, no. No better. Okay, this is where you would land. Check our payment by cash. You now need to pay for it. It doesn't tell you how much because this is a, a, a standard one. You mail it to this address, same as what you would have done before. Okay. Um, so this is the screen you would go to if you had said cash. If you had said If you had said PayPal, you would you would arrive at this page. And you have three buttons that you can you can buy it now, which is just as I want to put it on my credit debit card. You can add it to the cart. This would be if you were going to do a payment for let's say a husband and wife or uh, a friend, whatever. You would add yours to the cart. And then you would, if you add it to the cart, you go to here and then you can say, I wanna check out or I wanna continue shopping. If you say continue shopping, you're taken back to the beginning to fill out the form again. Okay, you can see here, it's a $22 payment. Uh, for membership, these are the these are the important things that uh, other places that I talked to had. Everything came as a donation. We know whether it's a membership, a renewal, a class. Um, we'll actually know which class you're going for and the dollar amount. So if I say I have a PayPal account, I check here. It's going to ask me to log into my PayPal account. If I say I don't have a PayPal account, but I do have a credit card, I want to pay without down here. So I do checkout. So let's say I'm going to do that. I'm taken to this screen, which I put in my credit card number. When it expires, the, the three-digit security code that's usually on the back, what your name is, where you live, your phone number, your email address, and then you click pay now. And that will be charged to your credit card. Okay, uh, for $22. So if I back out of that and say, I don't wanna do that. Instead, I said, I'd like to PayPal with my PayPal account. Okay, here's my PayPal account. now. When you get here, it may have my email address, it may have the last person's email address, it may have the Richmond Amateur Radio Club's email address. Type your email address over the top of this. So whichever email you'd like to use, type that in and then put in your password, log in, you'll be taken to your PayPal account. And then you have credit cards under there. You have money sitting in your PayPal account. However you have it, pay us the $22. Um, we, th this is actually, if you look up here, you, you might be able to see, we're actually on PayPal's account. We're not on our website anymore. So when you pay, we never see your credit card information. PayPal does. So we don't have to worry too much about that. Uh, when you go through this down at the bottom, after you've actually paid, there'll be a thing, return to merchant. If you click that, you'll come back to our site. So um, that's the, the main thing. 
that uh, we've managed to do. Um, the uh, if I go to If I go to this one, you see the form, and it's the same general idea here. You, you fill out the form. This is if you want to go to Bruce's class. Uh, you check that you, you'd like to go to this, this particular one. This was set up so in case we have multiple seminars, uh, we know which one you want. Um, and again, you have the same thing. Which, which way would you like to pay for this? And then you submit it. So um, it works the same way. Um, once we get the, um, once I fix the form for the membership, whatever I screwed up, um, the renewal form is, is in here also already. Um, oops, no, that's still the PDF. I haven't changed it. So sorry about that. Okay, so Ken, this is going to be uh, active, you think, tomorrow morning, right? Tomorrow morning, yeah. I, what I probably did is I changed, a, I, I changed one field on the membership form, and that was this, this field here, the payment option field. And I probably screwed up the email, and the email is trying to reference a field that isn't in that form any longer. Uh, that's my guess right now. Um, so... I'll find it. It's, it's, that 605 link you got, is that the 2021 one? I'm sorry, which one? The form 605. Was that the latest one? Oh, it should be the latest. Well, it's the last one that, um, well, uh, let's. Last one we got from you, Alan. Okay, there's what, can, can you guys see this form or not? No. No? No. Okay, let me stop sharing and come right back to it. Um, uh, let me see. Here we go. There's the form. Oh. Um. Uh, the newest one only has FRN in the box. It doesn't give you the option of the social security number. And also it tells you mandatory uh, on the email address, uh, not just to receive notification because uh, everybody's got to give them an email address by the end of June. Okay. If, if you can send me in some way a, a snapshot or anything of that form, we will make adjustments to this. All right. All right. Super. Any other questions about the changes that we have made or are making? No, I just want to thank you, Ken, for the work you've done on this. You and Bruce, Bruce both have put a lot of work into this website. And on, I think the, you know, the club, um, is indebted to y'all for the amount of effort you put into this. As I say, the, the, the biggest problem for us was, was not the actual um, adding, I guess is the best way, but was the ability to tie what PayPal sends us to the form that somebody filled out so that we know um, where it came from and how to how to pull those two back together. So okay. that's that's the biggest hurdle uh, to making this thing actually work. And as I say, we uh, we talked to some people who had done this and how they tied it, and that was extremely um, extremely helpful. Um, I don't know if you can ahead. see, but uh, Dwayne has his hand raised. Also, I do want to quickly say that I have heard compliments about the update on the website and how good it looks and how informative it is and easy to use. Super. Thank you. Thank you, Judy. So um, a lot of hard work, yes. So Dwayne had a comment or something, Dwayne. Yeah, I've got a question about the remote station. 
what so what computers does the software work on? Bruce, Bruce I'm going to let you address that, but uh, also too, when somebody somebody's got a mic open, there's a mic open. Um, we have a request from WD4 FMG who wants to take the seminar. Wants to know Ken if you got a check, and also uh, someone uh, is asking for um, Bruce if you could give a quick overview of the seminar. Okay, it works on uh, Windows and um, oh, what's the what's the tablet of the phone? iPhone, I I iPad, huh? iPad, or the no, Windows no. one? Maybe Android. 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 It runs on Android and Windows. So if you got either of those, and I've used it on both, um, and you, uh, the seminar basically is going to take you how, what, show you what it works, how it works, and what what's involved in it, and then where to get the software. Uh, the Arduino soft, uh, not Arduino, Android software is nine bucks. The uh, Windows software is free. We need Windows XP seven or ten, and uh, you load it up on your uh, computer and uh, and connect up with it. You have to be a member of the club, and what? And there's a table in our computer that runs yeah. our station uh, yeah. that has yeah. your call sign in it, and has uh, what your has the limits you can use and to what frequencies you can use based on your license class. But anyway, the seminar is going to take you through that, and uh, then you can load it up yourself. And the next class, two weeks later, will kind of go through with you getting yours going. Any, any questions? Yeah, there's no web interface. He goes, no, there's no web interface. Okay. You got a piece of software on your computer. Ken, did you get that check that this person's asking about? <coughs> You muted. I muted because you said people were. <laughs> oh, okay. So who was the guy that that was? WT four FMG Lauren. Oh, Lauren. Yes, I have her check. Good, good. So that answers that question. Give me a second. I gotta hit my cough button. Okay. Yeah, we have three students signed up for it right now. Um, John, Lauren, and um, JB. Edwards is good. So we're going to limit it to 12 because I basically I want a screen full and not more than a screen full. Makes things a little different when you're using um, um, Zoom. Okay. I have a question for everyone. <coughs> Bob, Bob Heil, the microphone guy, who's a lot of you probably know, um, has offered to do a, an evening with Bob Heil for us. And I've, uh, I've been through one of these. Uh, presentations by Bob on, on the uh, MARC or one of the other groups. I forget which which one it is now. But um, I'm just wondering if there's interest enough here. I mean, we'd like to have a good turnout if we get this man in because he's really a brilliant speaker and a, a great audio engineer and and well worth hearing if you you know if you haven't heard him before. Uh, is it um, is there enough interest here? to go ahead and get him or should we try to maybe partner with rats or somebody to do this, whatever. Can I uh, kind of see a, a show of hands if, of who would be interested in seeing him? Okay, well, it looks like we got a, it looks like we got enough people to make it worthwhile. I'll, uh, mm -hmm. I'll go ahead and talk then. Judy, do, do you have uh, a, a connection with rats that you could find out if they're interested in? I know, I know I'm a member of rats, but I just would like to know if you, you think they would, be interested in joining us on this um yeah i'm on the board now just yeah. as a director but you, you can um, let me know off meeting if you want but uh you know i'm, I'm just thinking if we get this man in here we, we want to have a nice turnout for him so it'll probably take two clubs i think that'd be great and i will bring it up with them their meeting is next week so i'll bring that up to them but i'm pretty sure we did have a meeting on I'm not sure who did that um, with Bob Pyle. It was very informative. So um, I I can't see that being any problem. Okay, great. So Maybe just let me know. The way she's holding this mic here. <laughs> uh, I John? would really wait yeah. until the camera's going to ask what she's suffering with. Uh, John? Yes. 
Uh, Jerry Sneed. Um, <laughs> I'm down in Colonial Heights. There's a, a club starting up down this way, uh, Appomattox Regional Radio Club, I think it is. Okay. Uh, they're connected with the um, um, Aries Net. Uh, you want to extend an invitation to see if those guys would be interested in joining that? Uh, sure, that absolutely. Thing? Okay. Absolutely. I mean, I'll the last time I saw Bob talk, there was 400 people in to, to hear okay. it. So, you know, I want to have a nice crowd if we do this. All right, I'll pass it on to them and find out uh you know more details later good deal thank you appreciate right. that um okay so what other announcements do we have tonight who's uh, who's on board that wants to talk to us got testing tomorrow okay i only want to tell us about it uh 10 a.m at the library the bonaire library up on rattlesnake road just what is it three blocks from the church and um i've got a dozen or so pre-registered and um expecting a few walk-ins and um this may or may not been talked to death before, but uh, reminding everyone that the FCC after June is not receiving United States mail. So it behooves every amateur to log in uh, via their FRN and add an email address. It is not public domain. And um, because that's the only way they're going to communicate with you. Okay, and, thank you. Uh, and uh, also, um, the thing about the fees, it still has not been put in place yet, but it, that's Congress's thing. It wasn't the FCC. It was part of the Ray Bonds Act. But when it does, um, anytime you renew or um, want to change call signs, upgrade the fee will um, come about if you just change your address or change your name it's still free but you're gonna have to do it online and um, uh, that will be just like before it should queue the form 159 that they used before when you had to pay um, the fee for vanity calls <clears throat> So that, that'll, that'll be old hat. Anyone testing that's brand new, they will not be collected at testing sites. It will go um, and um, uh, it'll, it'll take a different twist. Uh, so like say uh, tomorrow's session was gonna hit the fee. Uh, all the brand new people, as well as the upgrades, uh, will have to wait till Monday till the FCC reconciles my file that I send them Saturday because they don't work on the weekend. So instead of the license popping out, it will come up with a pending application with a file number. So you'll have to log in. You have 14 business, well, 14 calendar days to log in, reference that file number and pay your fee. And then at the top of the hour, if it's during the week, before 2200 Eastern, um, your license will pop out. So uh, that's 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 the way it is. And uh, send all of your uh, congresspersons hate mail because they're the ones that did this and imposed it for the FCC to collect. So um, there you go, <laughs> government in action. Yeah. Don't know what do how much good that's going to do either, these days. Um, okay, well, uh, if there's no other announcements, I'll I'll stand by again in case anybody else. Doctor Joe, are you here tonight with an ARL update for us? I didn't see you pop in. I guess not. Okay, well, if, does anyone else have anything before we go to our guests for tonight? Oh, I got a question. Sure. Uh, what was the model number of that uh, Yezu? It's an FT one thousand MP Mark V. MP Mark V. Yeah, according to what's, what what they've been selling for on eBay, it looks like between uh, thirteen hundred and seventeen hundred dollars. And um, 
the uh, the thing was was new in the box. I mean, it it obviously has, doesn't have a scratch on it, so it's probably uh, pr the guy probably never used it. Why is that had the mic and everything with it? No, it does not have the mic. Apparently, he had he bought one of the uh, external desk mics, and and she she had two radios. She sold one, and no. uh, the mic went with the radio. So this one does not have a mic. Oh, okay, no hand mic. No hand mic, right? And okay. it does. It, it it requires an external power supply. I mean, the instructions say it doesn't come with a power supply, so you need a a, a twelve volt power supply to go with it. Okay. Uh, yeah. Normally, I get on the uh, Aries net on Tuesday night at nine, and sometime we have new hands coming in there, yeah. and I'll pass that on to get back in touch with you. Is that okay? okay. That's fine. And I mean, it's, it's a really nice radio. It's got, you know, it's got more controls on it than, than it's 747. So, you know, somebody would get a real nice radio if they took this. Okay, fine. Yeah, I'll try to pass that on there. Okay, thank you, Tom. All right, well, if we have no, no other business for tonight, I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn our meeting over to our, our guest speaker tonight. <clears throat> uh, as you all know, the uh, uh, Q, uh, Virginia CUSO party's coming up, and uh, I see a hand raised. Judy? I just want to say for testing last week that Bill got a deer. Uh, sorry, I didn't hear that. He's uh, being comical here. Uh, on the way to uh, testing last Saturday, I uh, totaled my car hitting a deer. Oh, wow. We sorry to hear that. <clears throat> oh, dear. Hey, Sarah, Sarah, right? Hope you got some antlers out of the deal. <laughs> I didn't even care. I just, uh, it, it's, it's done. It's over with. Uh, we have pictures of the perpetrator. I've been, I told you not long ago, I wanted to uh, start looking for a new car, but I wasn't really looking for, to do it this soon. Well, no. Did, did, no. did you no, get you to got... keep the deal? Uh, by the time hey, I would have done that, it would have, it would have spoiled. But because we had uh, somebody pick us up, took all of, all of our belongings out of the vehicle. Went up to testing. David uh, KN4 LQN ended up. We reloaded it in his vehicle and brought it all home and unloaded. And so. we did hit it at 55 miles an hour, so Ooh. there's probably internal damage, which Great. probably will in the mean. I hope you all are okay. Not not a problem. The, the yeah. airbags didn't even go off. I was yeah. surprised. Yeah. All right. Well, sorry to hear that. Um, Thank you. Okay. Okay. Well, anyway, Gordon Miller is our speaker tonight, and for uh, NQ4K, most of y'all know Gordon, so I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to him, and uh, take it away, Gordon. Hi, I'm Gordon NQ4K from the Sterling Park Amateur Radio Club. It's been I don't know three or four years since I last joined you all down there when you were having regular meetings. Uh, I have a briefing. Last time I looked, it was 184 slides. You are all very lucky because I am not going to do 184 slides tonight. Okay. How many people have worked the Virginia QSO party before? One? Oh, my. Two. Oh, my gosh. That's pathetic. Three. Okay. How many people have seen this briefing before? Nobody. Okay. So this, uh, the briefing is available up on our website in a PDF format. You can get at it by Googling Virginia QSO Party. It usually takes you right to this website, and life is good. This is like the uh, 10th or 11th version of this presentation. I keep finding mistakes. Hopefully, you won't find any this evening. Uh, so what's different this year from the year before and the year before? We have one new plaque this year. We'll call it a go-to station, kind of keying off of uh, ARRL field days go-to station, you know, but this is for single operator only. I'll talk more about this in a minute. We continue to encourage automated log submission through our online portal. We will take paper. We've taken paper on napkins. We've taken paper on notepads. Uh, or you can email me your log and I will put it in the process. This year, we're going to mail certificates to everybody in the state of Virginia and any non-Virginians who put certificate yes in their log. Last year, we tried to group the certificates and send them all to the high scoring individual in each club. And unfortunately, I did that in June, not realizing that no one would have a club meeting for another year. 
So I don't know if you all got your certificates from last year or, you know, if there's someone in the club who still has a nice pile of certificates, all set to pass out at your next meeting. This year, we'll just mail them. Uh, okay, we're going to talk about tips and hams who helped and plaques and all these other things. Okay, 2021 March is the Virginia QSO party. For local time, it's 10, 10 a.m. on Saturday until midnight. And on Sunday, it's 8 to 8. So 10 to midnight, 8 to 8. It will be incredibly busy this year. If you're looking for a best frequency for the state of Virginia, I best guess is that uh, single sideband HF 3860. That's 80 meters. Go there and go up and go down a little bit, and you will, you will hit a lot of people calling. If you're on uh, FM VHF, then it's 146.580. You go there, go up and down a little bit, and you will you will find people. For logging, you can do a paper log or you can do an electronic log. If you do a paper log up on our website, it's a summary sheet. You know, that's just name and your address and what class you are. Go there, download the summary sheet, fill it out, and then uh, mail it in with your QSO data. If you're going to do an electronic log, the best logs are in one mm plus or in three FJP. In one mm plus is kind of hard to use if you haven't used it before, so don't install it in a rush. Using it for the first time can be a little bit complicated. Uh, the in three FJ, but it's free. The NG in three FJP Virginia QSO party logging software is not free. I think it's six dollars but it's very easy to install and it's very intuitive. Uh, both of those are good. And that's what everybody in the party uses with a few exceptions. If you haven't done this before, it's very, very, very easy. You tune to that frequency, you, you, you tune up, you tune down a little bit and you listen for someone to saying, QSO Virginia QSO party, this is W2YE or something like that. They'll say that. You listen to them for a while, then you answer with your call sign, NQ4K. If they hear you, they'll come back and they'll repeat your call sign, NQ4K, and then they'll give you a QTH and serial number. So that would be like loud and then the serial number is like one, two, three, four, five, six, whatever contact number it is. If you hear that and you can copy it okay into your log, you answer with QSL. That just means I copied your stuff and your QTH and serial number, like QTH Fairfax County 01. And that's it. And then all you have to do to stay competitive in the Virginia QSO party is to do that again and again for a thousand times and you will win a plaque. So we had some questions come up when I've given this briefing before. And there's two pages of questions here. Can I announce my intention to operate a station? my hours and, probability and probable bands and frequencies? And the answer is yes. We do that all the time. As a matter of fact, up on our website, we have a, uh, a place called Announced Operations. If you're planning on getting on the air, tell us and we'll put your name up there. Can I self-spot? The answer is no. Now, this is common in contests. Calling stations typically are not allowed to, to spot. That's called self-spotting. But spotting means a very specific thing. Spotting is reporting a call sign and frequency to a DX cluster or a single or similar system. So you as a calling station are not supposed to do that, but anyone who is answering you or listening can do that. And so spotting stations are, are quite, quite popular. Uh, can you use spotting nets, DX clusters, et cetera, to find stations to contact? And the answer is yes. We do not distinguish between um, um, assisted and non-assisted stations. Feel free to use all the spotting nets and DX clusters you can. As a matter of fact, we have two of them available up on our website. One is run by uh, Andy, K1RA. He runs an APRS mobile county tracker. So anyone who's running a mobile and who has APRS on their system can send him uh, updates you know, automatically and he will track the progress of their mobile through the state of Virginia. And John KX40 from the uh, Falkier Amateur Radio Association also provides something called the Virginia QSO Party Starting Spotting Network. And this is just uh, a DX cluster. And I'll show you a picture of that in a minute. What if I do not get all the exchange information? Ask for it again, right? Sometimes you miss it. 
just ask for it again. People will be more than happy to give it to you again. If you're in foreign station, put in DX as the QTH. We will uh, figure out what country that foreign station is from. If you finish the whole thing and you're missing information, just leave it blank, but leave the QSO in your log. Uh, you won't get credit for it, but you know at least it will show you made a QSO. These are the people who run the Virginia QSO party. Uh, over here used to be a picture of Dick W2YE. Some of you have, may have known him. Uh, he passed away this past August. This is Henry K2BFY. He writes our scoring program. So all of the logs, the electronic logs that you submit get rescored and it runs through his scoring program. Your paper logs get rescored also and we do that manually. Oh, this is me, this is Eric, AJ4N. LN. He's the one who actually does the scoring. Henry writes the software, he runs it. This is John KX40 from the Falkier Amateur Radio Association. He helps me with the plaque scoring. Now I know, and I know this is a shock to some of you, you may not realize it, but I do make mistakes. And uh, John there backs me up and rechecks my calculations just in case, you know, I don't award you the plaque. He will, he, he will, he will straighten that out. This is Marty in V3H. He's writing our online log submittal portal. Uh, he started it the first time last year. About two months ago, when we started gearing up for this year's party, he looked at it and said he don't know, you know, what pathetic person wrote that code last year because it was really bad. So he rewrote it this year. And this is Barry, KD4BK. All of you, if you participate in the party, will get a certificate. And on that certificate, it will say something like, you know, Hi, um, your 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 high station single operator low power, you know Chesapeake, or something like that, or it might be twenty seventh mobile, and Bear, we used to do that manually, you know, type it in, look look at all the numbers, but Barry there is trying to automate that, and we'll see how well that works this year. Uh, we have some people not in our club who. who spend a lot of time working on the party. This is John kx and this is the DX cluster he runs. And across here, you'll see frequency, call sign, time, how old that, that QSO was, some comments, and who the spotter was that submitted that report. And this gets updated every minute or so if you bring it up on your screen. And I use that. I, I sit here with it open on my computer and sitting at the radio, and I will watch that thing update and if there's somebody who pops up on there, I have not not uh, contacted yet. I can go there, and that's uh, that's a very popular thing. He'll run a couple thousand QSOs through that before the end of the party, especially since he's tied in to two or three of the really biggest stations in the Virginia QSO party. So a lot of data flows through that thing. And this is Andy. He runs that APRS mobile tracker. If you're going to run a mobile, uh, send him your call sign and and uh, and Sid, and here's your email address, and he will relay it or he'll display it on his map of Virginia and you can watch your mobile go across Virginia. I also watch that, that's fun to watch. This is Mike in 4CF. For those of you who are into contesting, there's this thing called a call history file. And that is, these are the call signs that were used in the four or five biggest logs that were submitted last year, along with their QTH. And you load this into your um, logging program, typically in one mm in three FJP does not use it, and it will auto complete the call sign for you when you start to type it in. And usually, it will also fill in the QTH in your logging program. Now you have to check that to make sure it's correct, but it'll save you some typing and maybe save you some errors. Let me tell you. Last year, there was this really, 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 really impressive mobile operation run by W4GO, Matt. And he, uh, he did over 2,000 QSOs on his mobile operation last year. That was the most number of QSOs in the party by far, almost double the number of QSOs made by the next single operator station. He contacted 82 counties, independent cities, mostly on 40 and 80 meters. He did 673 miles in 35 counties. And he was the only station making QSOs in seven of those counties. This is his vehicle. And here's his, uh, his antenna here on the top. 
you can see it. You can see the wire stretching, stretching right there. That's impressive. So I, so I, I, I talked to him a little bit and he doesn't log things as he travels. He records everything. So he's driving down the road. He talks on the radio and he records it. And then when he gets home, he sits down and he transcribes it all into the proper logs. So this is what he did in 2018. He went down the eastern part of Virginia in 2019, the southern part. And this is the route he did in 2020. You know, way down, way down here in the southwest corner of Virginia and back up again. And this year he's going to go down here and then cut back up this way. A little different route. It'll be interesting to see how well he does. People have a lot of fun you know, going up on that DS cluster and seeing when he hits a new county and then giving him a call. I think I did seven or eight contacts to him myself. Two other significant mobiles were MB3A. He did 606 QSOs and NG3V did 370, uh, mostly here on 40 and 80 meters. Look at the antenna on this thing. I'd almost be scared to drive down the road with that on top of my car. So we have plaques and sponsors. This year, we have 27 plaques. A lot of people are sponsoring these. Uh, let's see, your plaque is on here. Let me see if I, so here are plaques for, for Virginia stations. We have high power, low power, QRP, phone only, CW only. Um, there's a digital plaque on the next page, a couple of club plaques. There's a plaque. It doesn't matter what you are interested in. You know, there's a category here you can compete in. And here are plaques for any single operator station, regardless of where you are. You can be in Virginia or not in Virginia. And here's the plaque sponsored by the Richmond Amateur Radio Club, the single operator novice tech rookie. Although I will admit we call it that, but we have not seen a novice license in several years now. Uh, and here are some plaques for stations outside Virginia. Uh, you know, single operator phone mix QRP, single operator CW QRP and a high DX station. A lot of plaques there. I think people enjoy getting them. We're going to try to give the plaques as long as we can. All right. So we have this get on the air plaque. Um, we got the idea from Teresa, KG4 TVM. And she asked the question during the, the this same presentation to the old Virginia hams and uh, and so we thought about it for a little while and, and we said, you know, that is a good idea. There's a lot of people out there. Maybe you can bring in, you know, some of you have gray hair like me and perhaps have some grandkids or children who might be interested. So this is something they can do. So this is a, the rules are slightly different. So this is a Virginia station at which a non-licensed person participates in the Virginia QSO per party under the supervision of a licensed control operator. So that person who's operating the radio is doing all the work, right? They're doing the calls, they're doing the logging. Um, if, you, if you do do that, then somewhere in there, I've got to know it's a go to station. So put a go to station in the soapbox and I will uh, look for that when we do the logs and also the name of, and call sign of the control operator. So this is really an add on because Previously, before, if you if if you're running the station, you know, and someone comes down and wants to work the radio for a while, and they're not licensed. They can go ahead and do that anyway, and that that's been done several times. But you're still there supervising them. In that case, if you're both operating the radio, then we consider that to be a multi-multi station and not a single operator station. Okay. Last year, for the first time, in addition to the pandemic, there was this thing called the State QSO Party Championships. Now, some of you may have participated in that. The goal of this challenge is to recognize participation in the state or province QSO parties. Last time I looked, there were 47 of them. And the scoring on this is interesting. It's the total number of contacts you make in all of the parties. It doesn't distinguish between CW or digital or voice times the number of QSO parties entered. And in order to be considered to have entered a party, you've got to have made two QSOs. So, you know, you could do 47 parties with two QSOs each. And, you know, you had made what, you know, 94 contacts and that would be your score. So we anticipated some impact on that. And sure enough, last year, 
We don't know if it was a result of the state QSO party challenge or because of the pandemic, but we saw a big increase in the number of entries. We went from 449 logs in 2019 to 613 logs in 2020. I mean, that was a huge increase. Uh, we were surprised. I personally think it's because of uh, the state QSO party championships, but who knows? But we did see a big increase in the number of low QSO entries, right? So we had 11 logs with two QSOs and 18 logs with three QSOs. And then, you know, 113 were, were uh, equal to or less than 10 QSOs. So that kind of tells me there are a lot of people who joined the party just to get credit for, for the state QSO party challenge. Be interesting to see what happens. I can remember a couple of years ago, maybe I said it when I came down to visit you, you know, I have a dream and my dream is to get, I don't know, 400 logs. And, you know, we blew by that. So maybe my dream now is to get a thousand logs. Who knows? So there are some plaques though, where we don't have much competition. So we only had one entry for the single operator youth last year. So if you have, you know, someone in your club who's 18 or younger, you know, encourage them to get on the air and make a few contacts. They could win a plaque. And we had very few uh, contacts here on digital, very few logs submitted, only three last year. Uh, and then only three mobile multiple operator stations. So a mobile multiple operator stations is someone who goes out in, you know, in their car and they drive around and maybe one of them is a driver and one of them is working the radio. So we consider that uh, uh, multiple operator mobile. Even if that driver never gets on the radio, he's helping the, uh, the guy who is on the radio. Uh, that's different from what W4GO does in which he drives and he does the contacts himself and there's no one else in the car with him. But this is a very, very lightly uh, competed in area. Okay, uh, let's see, where are we now? 24. We have a whole bunch of counties and independent cities in the state of Virginia where we do not make any contact, any fixed station, where we do not get any fixed station logs. And there are 133 counties in the state of Virginia. And here are 31 counties, independent cities from which we have not received a fixed station log in the past five years. And then we have uh, 65 counties and independent cities they're right here in this column where we did not receive a fixed site log in the past two years. So we have a lot of places in the state of Virginia where we're, we are not uh, getting the word out and, and we're not doing enough encouragement to get fixed station operators on the air. What's helping us is the fact that these mobile operators are out there covering a lot of those QTHs to get them on the air. We did some presentations last year, you know, 6 February, 12 February, 18 February, and then the pandemic hit and we did not do any more presentations last year. Everything just kind of stopped. We did not have a scoring party last year. For several years, we used to uh, gather in my, in my converted garage here around a table and, and score the paper logs. Last year, we only had 16 paper logs submitted. So I just do them as they come in. It's easier that way. There are some people who still are not gonna make that transition to computers. And that's fine, we'll, we'll take their paper logs. Okay. <clears throat> I wanted to know, how do the top single operator stations do it? So here are the three top single operator stations. Uh, K1HTV did over 300,000 points. The mm -hmm. second high single operator station was W4GO, a mobile station. And he did almost 300,000 points. I mean, that's incredible. And then we had K3SK, a fixed station, high power, and he had about 225,000 points. So this guy, the high scoring single operator station was low power. So it does not matter if you're high power or low power. I guess you'll see what matters in a moment. The second high station was high power, but he was mobile. And then the third high station was high power. Now notice what, so low power is as good as high power if you're gonna hit the state of Virginia, but how did he get so many points? So he didn't have the highest number of QSOs. 
he had less than half the number of QSOs of the second station. But look what he did here, right here. He, he did a lot of CW contacts, which are worth two points, not one point like a voice contact. And he hit a lot of mobiles. Mobiles, contact with mobiles worth three points. So between the CW points and the Virginia mobile points, you know, and of course a lot of QSOs, he ended up with a high score. Now let's see what happened to W4 Geo Mobile. He had the high number of QSOs, 2,121, the most QSOs in the party, but his were all phone QSOs. I did have a, a couple bad ones, but his were all phone. And he hit a lot of counties and independent cities. And he ended up, you know, right here with just slightly less than uh, 300,000. Now look what happened to K3SK. He was fixed station, high power, you know, big antennas, worked as hard as he could. And he got a thousand contacts. And so now, now what happened here? Why did this mobile get 2,000 and this guy only get 1,000? And the answer is that mobile station was able to contact the same station over and over and over again every time he moved into a new county or independent city. So he could hit them on eight. He drove into a county or independent city. He hit all the stations on 80. Then he hit some stations on 40. And then he did a smattering on, on 20 and 15, you know, and then he was in, into the next county calling the same stations again in some cases. Whereas K3SK with 101, you know, he could do some 80, he could do some, some 40. But then he, every time after that, he had to hit new stations. He had to find new stations to contact. And after a while, that just gets to be hard. And so he did a thousand contacts and he just couldn't find any more stations to talk to. He still did very well. But anyway, it was kind of interesting to see how different stations approach the problem of, of, of uh, getting a high score. All right, so we're gonna skip over a lot of the rules. This thing is available up on the net. Feel free to download it. You can read the rules, you know, to your heart's content. We will say if there were some suggested frequencies, uh, these are in the rules also, you know, the best frequency to go to, you know, if you're on HF is 3860. We do have a couple of people who have queried about, uh, you know, digital, you just use the standard bands that are in uh, uh, WS, JTX, or if you're radio teletype, you know, uh, 3570. I'm going to talk just about a couple of slides here in the metadata. This is the one I mentioned before, how many logs we received. You know, as far back as I can go in 2001, we had just over 100 logs. And we've had steady growth over the years. And last year we had 613. It will be interesting to see what happens this year. Now we're going to skip way ahead. All this data is up there. I know some of you are data hounds. You will just love looking at all of these slides. Come on. All right, logging programs. So we had 613 logs. N1 MM plus was uh, was the electronic log of choice in almost half. And N3 FJP, which you can download from the web, very intuitive, easy to lose, easy to use, <laughs> had just under 200. And there were a smattering of other other things, 16 paper logs. Okay, so we had uh, 123,000 contacts. So that's about uh, uh, 61,000 QSOs. And a lot of uh, most contacts in the state of Virginia, you know, all cities, I mean, all states, provinces, et cetera, et cetera. We had one county independent city without a contact last year. You know, we've been coming near that in 05, we had 17, we hit z all counties in independent cities activated in 2015. And now it's hanging in here. Uh, one. And that one is King William. King William 
has not shown up before on our list of counties and independent cities without contacts. And last year, it just happened to, uh, to pop out of the ether. I do not know why. Where are you going to go? Remember I said 3860 HF was the most popular band for single side band. This is where the contacts were made. So of the 61,734 QSOs, 37,000, more than half of them were made on 80 meters. And uh, about a quarter of them were made on 40 meters and very few on the other bands. So if you're going to go somewhere, you know, go to 80 meters. If you don't have a big enough, uh, big enough antenna to do that, then, uh, then try going to 40 meters and you'll, you'll, you'll find people, but you may not be able to stay within the state of Virginia. You may go long, even on 40 meters. This is how the Q number of QSOs per hour uh, came out. The amusing thing is, is right in here, you saw that we had some QSOs reported before the actual start of the QSO party. And as near as we can tell by comparing the QSOs in these logs with other people, this was because uh, someone didn't set the time on their computer correctly. And so they were reporting local time rather than uh, uh, UTC. A lot of people at the start by midnight, there's not many people on the air anymore, but it's pretty level during the day, the whole day. And here's Sunday, pretty level the whole day, a little slow starting, a lot of people right there at the end, but it's pretty level the whole day long. So there's going to be a lot of activity and it'll be pretty steady. It doesn't really matter when you get on the air. All this data about where the contacts were made, what county and independent city. And you may have seen this before. We color coded the map to show where all the contacts were made. Red means bad, dark green means good. And we come up here and here's 2020. And this is where King William County is right there. I think that's what the uh, lower neck and uh, there's a major road right going right through there. So I'm surprised that that did not have any contacts. There's a lot of green out here. And usually there's a lot of yellow out here. And this lot of green is because of that mobile operation run by W4GO. You know, he went down here and then back up. And so he made a lot of contacts in these counties and independent cities as he drove through them. We have two club plaques. And you, you have what, 33, 34 people on here. You can easily get, you know, perhaps a few more people on the air and submit logs. You should do well in this, in this, in these club competitions. So the first one is we call high club combined score. What that means is you submit a log. We take the score on your log and we add them all together. But somewhere in that log, you've indicated what club you belong to. And when we add them all together, we get a score and we call that high club combined score. And for years and years, and I do not understand why Falkner Amateur Radio Association has dominated this high club combined score competition. And last year they had just under 2,500,000 points. LARG, the Loudoun Amateur Radio Group came close one year to beating them right here. They were only a couple of thousand points apart. And then, I, well, uh, some, a major person in their club died and after that their scores kind of fell off. So how did Falkier Amateur Radio Club do so well? Well, they had they submitted 53 logs. Some of those logs were only two or three QSOs, but they counted. And in the aggregate, it, you know, it really added up. PVRC here submitted 47 logs. And uh, here's Sterling Park Amateur Radio Club. We only submitted 10 logs. Now, there's a story behind why we only submitted 10 logs. And I'll tell you, it's like this. The guy who wrote our scoring program is a past president of the Loudoun Amateur Radio Group. And we are convinced he put something in that scoring program that said, every other log you score that says Sterling Park, we're gonna give the points to Larg. I'm pretty sure that's true. He swears it's not, but you know, we don't know. And let's see, where is, uh, 
Where is Richmond? Richmond's not even on this list. Oh, that's bad. Okay. So we have the other club plaque. This is called High Club Virginia QSOs only. We rescore all the logs and we take out contacts with non-Virginian stations. So we only count contacts with Virginia stations. And this is to encourage participation with those small, you know, small pistols of small stations who can't reach out far, but everybody can reach somebody in the state of Virginia. So this is emphasizing contacts in the state of Virginia. If you remember back to an earlier, an earlier slide where I listed all the plaques, we have plaques just for like high single operator Virginia QSOs only. So we want to want to encourage people who don't have big antennas to come and participate in the party. Okay, so the Falkier Amateur Radio Association also has dominated this competition for many years. In this one year right here, Loudon Amateur Radio Group beat them by a couple of thousand points. And uh, after that, you know, they're losing interest, I guess. Who gets all the plaques? 27 plaques. Every year we don't award all of them. I think last year we did awarded 26 plaques. But where do they all go? 12 of them went to the Falkier Amateur Radio Association members. Now, I talked to uh, people in that club and I said, how do you make this happen? How do you organize it so that you win so many plaques? And they swear up and down they don't organize it. That this is just where, you know, people's interest in the club uh, lie in these different modes of operation and doing different things. And it somehow ends up that they have, you know, a very good operator in most of the categories. And so they are competitive in most places. Uh, and this is going up, you know, five, seven, nine, 10, 12, you know, come on guys, you got a big club. You can, you could, you could be up there. Okay. All time high scores. You probably heard me say this before. I am always amazed every year someone will come in with a new high score. <clears throat> Usually two or three people will come in with new high scores. I don't understand how that's possible. You know, we're, we're, we're kind of near the bottom of the sunspot cycle. And, uh, you know, you would think people in the past have been good, but last year we had five new high scores and they're outlined right here. Mobile single operator high DX station, uh, single operator, phone only, high power, high Virginia club, Virginia QSOs only, high single operator, Virginia QSOs only. I mean, that's incredible. We also this year had two stations win multiple plaques. Uh, this has not been a significant problem in the past. Not, and it's not a problem, a significant uh, thing in the past. W4GO we ran that mobile operation, won four plaques last year. And those are right here, you know, single operator, high power, mobile single operator, single operator, phone only high power and high single operator, Virginia QSOs only. I mean, that's an incredible, incredible effort by him. And K3FRG also mobile won two plaques and he was a, uh, a rookie. And so he did high single operator, novice tech rookie and uh, high single operator VHF only. Uh, incredible. Every year, everyone gets a certificate. I hope if you participated last year, you got your certificate. If not, there's someone in your club who has it. Maybe he'll raise his hand so you know where to, where to go. So for the past couple of years, we've been going to different clubs and asking them to provide pictures. This year, we went to the Loudon Amateur Radio Club and let me cycle down through here. Come on. This was a year we, I went to Smithfield and gave this to a club down there. So we flew in their ham. Twenty twenty one. So these are some pictures from the Loudon Amateur Radio Group. Uh, they do a huge field day effort. So they like to advertise their field day. Uh, 
they like to help arrange and support contacts with the amateur radio station aboard the International Space Station. And the guy who's kind of key to that effort is right here, Steve, KS1G. He's really into that. And it sounds like this is a party club because, you know, I guess they like to highlight the fact that they, they do parties. All right, so how are we doing? How is Virginia QSO party doing in all the parties? If you rank them by the number of logs received, we're number three. We've been number three or number four for the past several years. 2019, we received 449 logs. Uh, last year, we got 613. Uh, we're kind of still well behind California. I'm unable to access the California website for some reason. I assume they're still high and Pennsylvania is number two. And uh, since I couldn't get Florida, I'll say we're number three. <laughs> but we do very well. We don't have that many operators, over 20, maybe 21,000 now compared to 106. But we do do, uh, do very well in, in getting participation. This year, I, I just calculated the percent increase where I could get the numbers from the number of logs submitted last year and the number of logs submitted this year. And we had a 36% increase. Pennsylvania had a 46% increase. Arizona down here had 106% increase. You know, in 2019, they had 178 logs. Uh, in 2020, they had 367 logs. So what this kind of tells me and what I think is going on here is there was this <clears throat> core of maybe 100, 150 operators who were competing in that, in that uh, state QSO party challenge and making sure that they entered all of the state QSO parties and that's driving up the number of entries everywhere. And uh, so overall we do very, very well. Okay, there's a lot of information in there I did not go over. Uh, it's available to download. We have all sorts of links and information up on our website. Please go and visit us. And we'll see you on the air in two weeks. Do we have any questions? Oh, I've got to have some question here. I've got a question. I think Judy has one as well. Um, if you're logging and stuff and somebody else is uh, competing or they're, and they don't log, does it count against you? No, it does not. Okay, my question is <clears throat> mainly, mainly because, and this is just a little bit of philosophy. We actually discussed this three days ago when one of our our meetings where we, we had our people running the party got together. We can we think we think of ourselves as a party. We're not. Um, we like to be a little more informal, a little more casual, a little more forgiving of minor mistakes. You know, with a, with a real live trying to get more people on the air. So don't be afraid about getting on the air and making a mistake. It doesn't matter. Just get on the air and have fun. Okay, next question. Um, my question is, and pretend my hair is so much lighter because um, my sister-in-law thinks I'm blonde. Anyway, what's the difference between a contact and a QSO? And oh. um, to me, it would say that it's where you're talking a little bit. And then other people are getting angry because they want to get in. No, 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 no. That that's just an artifact of our of our of the statistics. So, you know, QSOs contact right. There's someone on both sides of the QSO. And so and so when I did a statistic that said, you know, how many people in Virginia and how many people out of Virginia, I broke that into contacts. You know, so there's two stations on each contact. Some of them are in Virginia. Some of them are not in Virginia. It's just an artifact of generating statistics. So it's mean, um, a local doesn't mean person. Anything. So it's a local person as opposed to an outside person. Yes, it's it's. Well, in each QSO, right? There's two parties. There's, you know, you and the person you're talking to. And so I consider that to be two contacts. You know, you and the person you're talking to is two. Thank you very much. And I just did that for purposes of computing um, where the contacts were made, you know, where the QSOs were made. If you just count a QSO, do you count that as being, you know, the person who's calling or the person you're talking to? So I, I count both of them, both sides of the, of the QSO. Okay. 
Thank you very much. You're welcome. So is it, is it, are you uh, in for WLC? No, I'm November 4, Julia Delta, India. So I can treat, uh, train these people how to spell Judy. Uh, I don't see your picture on here. We're, we're together on here on the uh, video. Um, I'm the shorter one without the beard. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> oh, I see, right there. You're right, your hair does not look blonde. No. Yeah, just pretend it is because I ask um, questions that are dubious. <laughs> <laughs> okay, any more questions? No? Okay, well, thank you very much for listening. Well, thank you, Gordon. We appreciate you coming and talking to us. Okay. And uh, everybody, I uh, hope to see you all out there. Yes. And thank you very much to the club for uh, sponsoring a plaque. We appreciate that. Okay. Um, you're getting some thank yous on uh, the chat line if you want to check them out. Okay. Is there any other business that we need to talk about tonight? Then in that case, I'll go ahead and ask for a... Uh, Motion to close the meeting. Motion to close. Any Anyone second it? I will. B-I-Z. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, good. Thank you all for attending. And uh, uh, say, make sure that you pass the word around about that radio we're trying to get rid of. The club could definitely use the money. Yeah. So um, I'll see you all at the next meeting. And thank you very much for being here tonight. Seven threes. Thank you, John. Seventy three, everybody. Thank Thank you.